So hi everyone, uh, this is a recording of a Zoom class. We're going to be doing um, some drawing based on looking at initially at the practice of uh, Richard Diebenkorn, who I've talked about quite a lot, who I like, um, and in conjunction a wee bit with Matisse, how Matisse's work influences, influenced uh, Diebenkorn in what he did. Um, so I'm going to start, uh, share my screen and start a short presentation. So we'll be doing a, there'll be a short presentation, uh, then practice, it's a drawing, it'll be drawing practice, and I'll talk more about that when we get to that after the presentation. So um, where are we? Uh, share screen, share screen, share, right, share screen. There we go. So, start the presentation. Um, so, I, I didn't know what to call it. I, there's Richard Diebenkorn features in it, uh, but there's bits of MIT. So, I just put all of those things in. It's a drawing, it's a presentation about drawing. We'll be doing drawing in the practice. Uh, in conjunction with Matisse, some of the things Matisse did. And then it's about space and shape and negative space. Some of the ideas I've talked about in um, some of the other uh, uh, classes, presentations, and presentations we've done just recently. Um, so Richard Diebenkorn, uh, 20th century American artist, uh, went through three, three distinct phases in his life, in his career, um, from a sort of early lyrical abstraction uh, at the time of the, the abstract expressionism on the East Coast of America. He was doing that on the West Coast. Then he moved into a more uh, figurative, uh, near a, a time of figuration when he did landscape and figure painting, that sort of thing, uh, with an emphasis on, on composition and colour. And then at the end of his life, he moved into a period of hard-edged abstraction again, so in three distinct phases. And this is more to do with the drawing he did um, in the uh, that sort of middle phase. And there's three of his still lives, and he did a lot of desktop still lives, and that, that's what we're going to be doing when we come to our practice. Um, but I want to talk about the idea of, of space and, and negative space. And that drawing on the left there, that sort of tabletop still life with the round table that's cut in half by the, by the picture plane is a really good example of that. The, pic, the, the desktop is the, the space, if you like, the, what is the focus of the picture. And that, that dark area around it, uh, which gives it the shape, is the negative space. So it's, you can be described as space and negative space, but it's really just shapes and other shapes, how, how they relate to each other. Uh, so it's also that the, the, um, the, the darkness creates, um, because of our understanding that it's a tabletop we're looking at with objects, the darkness suggests depth uh, also. Um, but we'll talk more about that uh, further into the presentation during the practice. So the, you've got space and negative space, but the objects on the table, I, I quite like the way he does his drawings. They're not too perfect. Um, and I quite like emphasizing that fact, not that your drawings shouldn't be perfect, but that they needn't necessarily be a perfect facsimile of, of uh, three-dimensional space. It's about other things as well, and we'll talk more about that. So the, 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 uh, the glass there on the table gives, the, the oval of the uh, top of the glass gives a sense of uh, perspective. So you, you know you're looking at it from, from an oblique angle, um, as do the legs of the glasses and, and the, the perspective of the books, that sort of thing. So he's, he's interested in creating the illusion of depth. Um, also, the, the drawings on the right there, the two drawings with the scissors, he, he really liked using scissors and knives and things like that in his drawings. And, and uh, his, I don't think there's any, well, there may be some deep psychological meaning. I, I'm not sure what it might be. But I, for me, it's more of a, 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 a visual device, a, a way of uh, investigating the idea of perspective and depth within a picture. So he, he puts those scissors on top of a cup and there's that, that dark space behind the cup, which, which um, sits, sits behind them and, and, and creates the space and negative space, the, the depth of the, the, the void of the cup. Um, and the, the, the perspective of the scissors suggests the depth, the perspective of the, the, uh, the picture we're looking at, certainly in the top one. And that the, on the, the top drawing there, top right drawing there, the, um, that dark area to the edge performs the same function in that drawing as the, the, the dark semicircle in the drawing on the left. Uh, it gives, it gives a definition to the area we're, we're interested in. It creates a sense of space. Uh, it lifts it up. Um, as do the lines, the, the edges, the uh, parallel lines, the, the uh, linear perspective of the edge of the, that white tablecloth and that we seam that's on it. Um, so he's, uh, he's interested in depth, he's interested in shape, he's interested in negative shape, um, and, and he's also interested in, in just the process of drawing, I think, uh, the pleasure of, of the activity um, and what, can, what he can learn from it. He's, his, his work, in my opinion, his work isn't about necessarily messages, it's about the process of painting and and how what painting is, and how we manipulate the surface to create to create um, um, things of interest that have meaning. Um, so that's a, a drawing of his. It's a it's a wash drawing. We're going to be using washes in um, the practice today, and I'll come to that later on when we do it. But they, 
there's a in, in that particular picture he's sort of interested in you see the diagonals of the the uh, parallel lines on the on the tablecloth top there so one of the features of, of demon corns or what, what, what is often a feature in, in his work is the is lines that are parallel to the edges of the, the edges in the top and lines that are that are at an angle to it oblique oblique lines sort of diagonals if you like and how those two ideas uh, suggest the depth within a within a picture um in this case, it's a recognizable tabletop, and the, the depth is created by those parallel lines, the, um, the linear perspective of that tabletop, and the, the lightness and darkness of the various planes, which should suggest the shape of the object, and again, they suggest depth. But it's also the way, the way that he's, um, what's interesting is the way he's looking at uh, the, the relationship of the shapes, and that's, that's a, a sort of important thing for him, and you see it uh, used in a, in a sort of uh, a different way, if you like, uh, but in a Way that has a relationship to these drawings later on in his career in the last phase of work that he did the open ocean park series so um depth uh, shape and uh, negative shape um and space and perspective another tabletop we really love these sort of chaotic tabletops that's just more examples of the same thing and you see there's other other things being used there as well like you know dots circles at uh, the tops of those uh, drinking cans the uh, the voids of the um in, in the spectacles, they're all sort of visual tools that he's using. Um, but it's really nice wash drawing, which is what we're going to be using later on in our practice. Um, he was very influenced by Matisse. He went to uh, St. Petersburg to the Hermitage uh, as a young man. And he saw um, the Hermitage has the biggest collection of Matisse paintings. Uh, one of Matisse's uh, big benefactors, sponsors when he was um, painting, was a Russian guy who bought a lot of his works. And they're in St. Petersburg. So um, Diebenkorn went there and looked at the, the painting bottom right uh, is a sort of um, um, homage or tribute or, or related to Matisse's paintings um, so, and he was and there's a lot of uh, work about um, you know books published about the relationship that uh, between Diebenkorn and Matisse or the influence Matisse had on Diebenkorn's work I should say because Matisse came first so those, uh, that drawing top right he's using pattern in a sort of similar way if you like the way Matisse did um, uh, and on the left there also the sort of flower thing but that you can see in that a chair, that wicker chair, another graphic illustration of the idea of shape and negative shape and um, how he's, you know, using those ideas and, and the light and dark, the flowers are the lightest thing, although funnily enough, they're not really the thing you focus on, you focus on the chair um, and using a, the, the, that idea of shape and negative shape to create uh, one, the composition and two, the idea of depth. Um, this is a, a really interesting uh, painting, the one on the right, funnily enough, is the one I want, uh, that I'm interested in. It's a Matisse painting, um, as is the one on the left, and they're of the same window. Uh, Matisse lived in the south of France for quite a long time, and he, this, he did a lot of paintings of this window, and most people would be attracted to the one on the left. It's, it's brighter, it's, it's got more variety, it's, it's sort of um, happier painting, if you like. Uh, but the one on the right is the one that Diebenkorn um, cited as having a big influence on him, and I think it's to do with that idea of uh, space and negative space, how the darkness and the lightness suggest different different planes, um, and it is it's a it's a very it's a very simple painting. It wouldn't stand out like the one next to it, but it's it's quite an important picture, certainly for for Demon Court. Um, and I went to see it, and it is it's just it's three stripes of colour on, on a canvas. Uh, but I wanted to see it because I was sort of interested in in in, uh, in what it looked like after knowing the Demon Court story, and being interested in Matisse. Um, so I've talked about uh, these three drawings at the top before. They're all Diebenkorn drawings, the, the, the charcoal line drawing on the left, watercolor in the middle and paper cutout on the right. And the one, that one in the middle, the watercolor in the middle, I think is a direct uh, response to that, the Matisse painting, which is again at the, in the bottom row on the left there. Um, and I think what he's done is he's, he's looking to see how that idea of the, the darkness and the, the depth of the picture can be played with when in conjunction with the drawing of the woman with the arms crossed and the legs crossed and the hat. And it's a, it's a you know, looking at another artist's work as a way of um, furthering your understanding of your own work. What, what did they do? How can it influence what I do? Or how does it, how does it, what does it mean to what I do? Um, so I think that the, the watercolor of the woman in the doorway, in the, in the window is a direct response to the Matisse painting on no other, no basis other than that's my opinion. Um, I haven't read anywhere that's what it is, although someone may have said that. Um, the, the, the paper cutout on the, 
on the right there is sort of very closely related to Matisse's paper cutouts also. And Matisse's in, in those paper cutouts, uh, they're really kind of joyous uh, pieces of art, but he's also playing in, in, in with the idea of space and lightness and darkness. And if I can illustrate it using the, the, the cutout there, of the, the, the woman on the middle one of those, sorry, the, yeah, the middle one of those three uh, bottom uh, images, uh, the woman with the legs the leg crossed, um, and that space where she's crossed her legs, uh, a, that light space between her leg, two legs there, um, is would be a shadow uh, if you were doing a drawing or a painting and trying to create the, an illusion of, of uh, the way you saw it. But what it is, is he's, he's taken that idea of space and negative space, and he's just playing with it. Normally it might be dark, but he's made it light to make the, the silhouette of the figure stand out. Um, so that's what, one of the things modernism did was gave people the opportunity to play with those ideas. What, what was thought of as correctness before uh, was just a, a, a visual tool to be to manipulate it to see how you could uh, a, create new ways of, of, of interpreting things. So, you know, Matisse was, was a big influence and, and Demon Corns using those ideas in his paper cutout on the right. Um, the, uh, the relative uh, values of, of the, uh, the colors he's using. Uh, to create that drawing again. Um, so yeah, Matisse was a big influence on, on, on uh, Dean Korn. Um, and you see there, that, that painting on the left is one of Dean Korn's paintings from this Bar Berkeley period. Um, and he, the drawings, were, the drawings from life like that, ink drawing on the right it is from life, it's from a situation. He, he possibly uh, invented bits of it, I don't know, but the paintings certainly are documented as being uh, very much made up. Um, he would start off perhaps the real situation, but he would adjust as he felt necessary as, as the painting went on. Um, and you can see there the similar idea to what I was talking about earlier, how he, how he has lines that are parallel to the, to the edges of the, the frame of the picture and the diagonals and how he, um, how, that inf how he plays with that to create the composition, what he finds in interesting with, uh, with uh, items to focus on within that. And that's an idea that becomes more and more uh, apparent in his, in his later work. Um, in the, the uh, Ocean Park series. Um, and there, there again, you see two of his paintings again, um, which were, the, the one on the right is probably basically, he had a balcony at the back of his house in San Francisco, and that's sort of, it looked a bit like that. So that probably started with that idea. Um, and I don't know what the room on the left is, but it's light and dark, uh, parallels, um, parallel lines, uh, oblique lines, um, space and negative space. And I just put this in as a sort of, a, sort of a, to illustrate some of the ideas I've been talking about. These are the, the two white, whiter drawings are from his late last period of work, the Ocean Park series. Um, and you can see that idea of the parallel lines and the diagonal lines. Um, and that, the painting bottom left is also from that, that period. I'm not trying to suggest that. Uh, that's absolutely what he was aiming at when he started off doing those uh, interiors, tabletops, that sort of thing. But it's very difficult not to make that connection when you look at them together. Um, abstraction was a thing, you know, after his period of figuration, um, he said that one day he was just sitting and, and he, he started thinking about abstraction again, and he stepped back into that world. It wasn't a great, a grand plan that he ever had at the start of it. It was just something that, that happened to him that he did. Um, but it's very difficult not to make that connection between the two periods of work. Um, so that's a wee, uh, another wee ink drawing of his. He did lots of really beautiful, very quick uh, uh, sketches when you look through uh, illustrations of, of his drawing work. Um, mm. Lovely drawings, very, very informal, very relaxed. Uh, and and uh, well, for me, nice things to look at. I, I really like his work. Uh, but that's the kind of idea we're going to be working with today uh, when we come to practice shortly. Uh, and this is what we're going to be doing. I've, we're working once again from the screen. So I've taken a, a picture of what it is we're going to be uh, doing because it doesn't make, if, if I point a camera at it, it's still flat on your screen anyway, um, unless you set one up for yourself at home, which is a good idea. So this is the one where I've set up and I did, I've done a version of this, which I've recorded. So I'm going to show you that it's very, it's pretty quick. It's a time lapse. So we'll, I'll just play it and you can watch that and then we'll move into the practice uh, and see what's what.
So that's a, a quick, a speeded up version of, of what I did. And it's um, the, the, the practice day is based on that idea of looking at shape, negative shape, um, space within a picture, the, the illusion of depth, if you like. But also it, it's a chance to try uh, ways of working techniques using materials in, in a certain uh, sequence to create the picture. And the, the picture starts off with simple you know, lines uh, to delineate, delineate shapes. Then you start adding tone value with the, with the pencil um, and then, then some washes and the washes I'll talk about in a minute. Um, a couple of washes to add some more interest and depth and, and variety to the work. And then starting to sort of push pull the drawing. So coming back in with some, some lighter stuff to, to bring back some areas, some other areas of lightness um, and working on it again with a pencil. So that's the, the sequence that we're going to go through um, as a technique of making a picture uh, and up, but, but looking at the idea of um, shape, negative shape um, and space within a picture when we do it. So I'm gonna stop that uh, presentation there and talk to you about what we're gonna do. So I will move to my camera um, below, or camera above I should say, um, and talk to you about that. Tell you that. So there we are, this is what we're gonna do. Now, before we start that drawing of the, um, of the still life, I wanna do a quick exercise. Uh, and it's not, it, it's, it is a very quick exercise um, that uh, people do from time to time. I've done very, very occasionally in, in classes. And it's an interesting thing because we're going to think about space, but working from a, from a, a drawing, um, it's really to do with the, the, the exercise do, to do with drawing what you see, not what you think you see. And there's a, there's a well-known uh, version of this where people draw Picasso's version of the uh, drawing of Stravinsky, but you're not going to just copy the drawing, you draw it upside down. So you take away, or you don't take away completely, but you um, reduce the awareness of what it is you're drawing and just look at the shapes. So I want to start, I'm not going to do it with Stravinsky. I'm going to do it with, with one of Henry Moore's um, sheep drawings. Uh, and I don't want you to, just shift that up a wee bit. I don't want you to, to um, a, draw the value of it, draw the tone in the drawing. I just want you to draw uh, the line of the sheep. And there's, we'll do a couple of these perhaps today. Uh, during the session, um, one now and one in between the two other two exercises. So what I want you to do is, is look at it and, and, you know, look at the shapes, the relationship of shapes and, and draw them. It doesn't have to be one, it's just a linear drawing. I don't want you to do the value, the lightness and darkness. It's just look at the relationship then. So I'll probably start, yeah, you can see that there. Um, probably start with the, uh, you know, the ground where the, where the grass is, start that and then uh, no, pencil. Burst, so I'll get another one. So I'm just, I'm looking at the shapes. I'm not wondering, does it look like a sheep? Um, I'm just looking at those uh, areas between, between the legs, trying to get those shapes right. Um, and I'm doing it fairly quick. It, it's an exercise. It's, you're not, I'm not wanting you to create some uh, beautifully rendered sort of finished piece of work, if you like. No, that's a little bit. So just looking at these areas, different, oh, you can't see there, sorry. Just looking at the, at the different areas, you know, the, these shapes here, that shape there, um, that sort of thing. And hopefully it'll all join up in a little bit. Hang on, that's bigger. So something like that, just a quick drawing of the sheep, Henry Moore sheep upside down, um, concentrating on the shapes, uh, 
that, that you're looking at rather than the fact, is it a sheep? So uh, have a go at that um, with anything. And they, we might do, if we get time, the Stravinsky drawing later on. I've got it here. Um, you might work your way up to that uh, once you've got a, a, an idea, a better idea of what it is you're doing uh, with it. Um, and try that. So that's a nice wee exercise to think about um, drawing what you're seeing rather than the idea of what you're seeing, because we all, we all bring uh, prejudice and, and preconceptions to, to what it is we're doing. So there's the, this is the image we're going to be working with, the, the cup on the table and the, um, the chair behind with the, the, the cloth. And it's very much sort of looking at that uh, demon corn idea. And it's just a section of something, or it might be a section of something that he might have looked at. Um, uh, just time-wise to let people uh, get things done in the time. Um, so the only thing that really gives that the, uh, the sense of depth there is the, is the cup, if you like. If you take the cup out, it becomes a much flatter image. Um, the cup and, the, and the shadows, you know, the perspective of the cup, the fact that you know that's a, that's a, a circle you're looking into, the depth of that. So the cup's quite important. But it's really, I want to look at the shapes, okay? You know, the, the shape of the table, uh, th this shape here, that, that shape there, you know, space, negative space. Um, what, how, how big is the, the, the void of the cup, that sort of stuff. So we'll look at that as we go along. We'll start off with linear, uh, then, then value, then wash, then push and pull. Um, and that's, you'll end up with perhaps something a bit like that. And I'll talk about the wash when we get to it. So uh, I'll put that to the side, uh, take a bit of paper. Now I've got a bit of paper. I like to um, put uh, a rectangle around the area I'm going to be drawing on. I do that quite a lot. It helps me to uh, well, define the edge of the drawing, understand the drawing better. And it, it's about the same size as the um, as the image I'm working from. So I'm, I'm at an advantage there. It's about a, it's in A4 uh, uh, printout. This. Um, so I'm going to start looking at. And I'm going to draw with. Um, I like to draw with these graphite sticks. Um, these things here. Um, they're pure graphite. So it needs to be soft. So it means it's easier for you, for you to see what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Um, so first of all, I'm going to look for, for this kind of horizon line here, and that's because right next to it, I can see it, so that's pretty easy. That kind of goes there, okay? Then this space here, uh, got a corner, so that's, you know, something like that. It's on a slight, slight oblique angle. Um, this shape in here, I'm looking at this shape. I'm not necessarily looking at that. I'm, I'm looking at this shape. Um, so it kind of goes down and up. Bit like that, and there's another bit does that cup comes across and cuts it. And then there's the shadow. I'm going to show, sort of show where the shadow is, and the shadow obviously echoes the top of the uh, of the um, of the spar on the, on the chair there. Next thing we're going to look at is this this line here, which carries on up to, to the edge of the table. It's part of the pattern, so it starts about there. And that sort of angle. So you're starting to build relationships of, of shapes before you draw this cup. Um, so you're starting to get better understanding of where it's going to be because you've created uh, points of reference on your drawing, um, which are useful. This this semicircle thing here uh, comes quite close to the the edge of this this shape, so it's going to be something like a something like that. Now, when I draw, I talk to people quite a lot how I don't make things that are too definitive to start off with, um, and they'll get more definitive as, as we go along. So there's. There's that, um, and there's that wee couple of pair of scissors sitting on top of that, that thing there. So I'm going to look at for the uh, where the cup is now. And the edge of the cup, you know, cuts across about here. So you're looking for for the points of reference to about there, something like that. So you look at that distance there, about there. So looking at what what that is and the shape of it. Now that's a wee bit too far over. Yeah, that shapes so we need to move things like that and shift this over a bit. So you do that as you you know you'll find out when you're making paintings and, and drawings that, that uh, you need to adjust as you go along. It's fine, it's part of the process. Uh, that's the, the, the way it works. It goes there, comes round. Ooh. 
the saucers. Yeah. Same sort of ellipse as the as the cup. So go, you know, go like that behind. About like that. A bit bigger, perhaps. Something like that. And then there's the, the handle. So we're, we're defining these areas with, with the pencil, the, the, um, and then we'll start working in with some the light and dark. So that's okay for that. I'm happy enough with that. And as we shape in there, there's this leafy thing that does that. Another wee thing that does that. So I'm looking for the, the other shapes in the, in the drawing now. Um, this one here is quite important. That's better. So nearly there with this, that's a wee bit too close. That goes a bit more like that. There we go. Okay. Just looking at those shapes there. There you go. So that's kind of it. There's a wee thing there that does that. And that one. So that's that's sort of the the, the, the linear the uh, part of the drawing, the edges, um, and we're going to look now at uh, the some of the the values, lightness and darkness. I'm going to start with the darkest. If you can establish the darkest, you know everything else is lighter than it. So this area here, just sort of. Fill that in more or less. The the, uh, the very soft 8B graphite sticks really good. It means I can work really quickly. That so all these darkest bits and getting in. And I, I guess a wee bit like the sort of even corn thing. I'm not worried too much about how how perfect my drawing is. Uh, yeah, but you, you you can be the judge of that for your own. I like oops, I like the messiness of his work. Broken. So we, each um, each layer of you know different ways of working, different techniques, just brings a, a different, a new kind of interest to the, to the drawing. So you can stop a drawing at any stage. You know, Matisse did just a lot, of, a lot of line drawings, and he would take a drawing and draw whatever he was doing—a a person, a face, a head, whatever, whatever it was—and then take that drawing and draw from that drawing, simplify, sort of try to distill down the elements of what he was what he was doing, what he was drawing to its uh, simplest. Uh, uh, component, uh, but that's not what we were doing today. Um, so I'm finding all the all the really dark parts of the drawing uh, to start off with. Share. It's not the only way to start drawing, but it's how, how am I doing this one? So 
So they're now thinking about what's a wee bit, wee bit lighter. These um, other shapes here. That's about the reds a wee bit darker. And these shadows also. So thinking about the um, cut there to rub out these other lines. Oh, maybe there. So that'll do for that. You can work on that as, as long as you like. So we've um, worked on the sort of the edges, the shapes, um, uh, where the relationships are, then uh, some values to create some some depth, some contrasts um, to work on on that. Uh, looking at the composition, um, and now what I want to do is start. Uh, adding in some washes. Now, uh, not everyone has uh, paints at home. If you've got watercolors, you can maybe use a, a, a watercolor for this, uh, Paints Gray or something, or, or just whatever you choose. Um, if you don't have watercolor ink, watered down ink, um, you can use watered down acrylic paint if you like, anything, uh, if you've got something like that. For those of you who don't have uh, any paint at all, what I did, um, I've got those things in the studio here, but for, for this, um, what I've done with this here, this wash, is I actually made it out of coffee. Just a, a spoonful of coffee, the way you normally would if you're making instant coffee in a cup. And then a, bit, a very small amount of water in it to keep it a bit stronger, um, make it a bit, bit, bit thicker, a bit darker, um, to use as a wash when I'm, when I'm doing this next bit of the drawing. Uh, so that's one way you can work your way around it. Um, if you make it too thick, it takes a long time to dry. Uh, it gets a bit, stick, a bit sticky, a bit goopy. So, what I'm going to do is put a wash over this. And I'm going to put it over, over everything apart from the cup, which I'm going to come back. I'm going to do two washes. I'll put the first one down, dry it off with a hairdryer, and then um, do a second one, which is more uh, specific. So the first one is going to be over the whole, the whole uh, drawing. Um, and it'll change it quite a lot. Um, some bits will be the way I want them to be uh, when things finished. Others will need to be changed as we go along, but it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to work. Um, uh, Demon Corns, I'm not saying this is how he, he didn't use coffee, I don't think, um, but he used a lot of washes in those drawings that, that I showed you. Uh, sometimes he uh, used gouache, quite a lot of gouache, which is a, an opaque paint. So that's a wash over the whole thing, and I've left the cup um, the, the brightest thing. Now I've got a hairdryer here, which you might want to use to, to dry it all off. There we go. That's the first wash. Second wash I'm going to do now is a couple of parts to it. Um, I'm going to make some of the darker parts um, darker. Um, just add a bit more uh, coffee to them. Uh, put in some of the shadows. So there's kind of shadows up this, the edge of this this uh, chair leg here. There's the shadow in the front there. Do it more on the on the leaves. So I think 
shadow leaf, the shadows there. So a couple of washes, uh, one general thing, one general over the whole thing, then some more kind of focus washes, shadows, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm going to work on the on the cup. I'm going to put some wash on the cup, but it's it's a wee bit thick for the way I want the cup to look. So I'm going to take um, some uh, just some water. So I take a take a bit of the wash on my brush, uh, dunk it in the water first, and then put it on the cup. So it's a wee bit the the wash is a wee bit thinner. Okay. Um, I'm not going to put it over the whole thing. Get that dry. So, um, so that's a couple of washes uh, on top. So we start off with, with linear, then some, some values with light, lightness and darkness with the, um, with the graphite, then in with some washes. So that's a nice way to work so far. So far. And um, what I want to do is now start sort of pushing and pulling it, adjusting the surface. Yeah, I've, got some, I've got some white pencils um, that I'm going to use, uh, which are quite nice. If you've got I don't know, white pastel, uh, white, white chalk, anything like that. You can use white watercolour, um, watered down white acrylic, anything that you have that might, might be whiter uh, would be what I use for the next stage. So I'm going to bring some of the areas back now um, that, that were lighter, lighter in the first place um, and start ad adjusting the drawing, pushing and pulling. So, oops, brush. All right. This plate here is quite a lot lighter. So Demon Corn used to, um, you know, in his landscapes, he would he would invent uh, bits of landscape, change the painting according to how he thought the, the composition would benefit the most. And you can do that with any piece of work you're creating, uh, adjust it to to how you want it to look, how you think uh, it will make the picture work best, and you can do that in, in your drawing as well. Um, this is a wee bit lighter up here. And these bits in here. Ugh. Pencils are all breaking. Now you can then start working with the uh, with the graphite stick again. This is I think a bit darker in here, the leg of that chair. So you're kind of pushing and pulling at it once you've established, you know, where the um, where the areas are, where the edges are, where the where the where the values are, um, and take it as far as you want. Uh, so which is the conclusion you're happy with. Um, 
that's not too bad. Cup can maybe work on a wee bit that. So anyway, I may not take it much further than that. I think the um, this I might take that down a wee bit. It's not as uh, it's, it's a wash with a bit of water in it. Um, actually, I might dry that off. So there you go, you can uh, keep working on that as, as long as you want. The, the basic idea is there. Um, the, the idea of working with space, negative space, shape, negative shape, um, relationships, uh, then think about the drawing. So starting off with a linear drawing, then uh, lightness and darkness, the, the value of, of the piece, um, and then uh, working in with, with uh, washes to, to add interest, give variety, uh, and, and push the drawing a bit further and then push pull with the lightness and darkness as a way of completing or, or giving the, the drawing a, a better sense. So there you go, that's, I, that's as much as I'm gonna do to that and we'll move on. What goes in there? What goes in there? So there you go. Um, that's that, you can uh, have a go at that. Um, I think we've emailed out the photographs to everyone. Uh, so there's that. So we're going to move on. We're going to do another exercise now with the. Um, let me just arrange myself here. Uh, what we did before with the the, the the shape idea with the sheep, um, Henry Moore's sheep drawings. Uh, you can either do that or or the Stravinsky one. So this time I've got it's a wee bit more complicated. Uh, the sheep. Uh, once again, I'm going to focus on, on the shape rather than, than the, the value. Um, and you can do this with anything, it's, with, with, with any image. It's generally an image, you can do it with, uh, you can't maybe turn a room upside down, so it has to be something you can make upside down, maybe maybe in a mirror or something. Um, so it's about looking at the uh, drawing that you see, not what you, not your idea of a sheep, but just purely the, uh, the relationship of shapes. So I'm going to, there's the ground there, and start off here again. It's more complicated because there's two sheep and there's foreshortening in it. And that's quite sort of quite interesting. People very often have uh, difficulty with foreshortening. Um, can't get their heads around it. Talk a wee bit of that maybe when I come to it. Somewhere. No, oh, I'm not doing well here at all. That shape there is much smaller. No, it comes down like that. Okay, fine. That'll do. Um, and then this the, the, the this shape here is the body of the sheep, and it's, it's you would think well, you know, the body of the sheep is long, but there's a lot of foreshortening in that, so it's just that sort of shape there, and then this. The head of the lamb. Maybe something like that. Maybe that shape in there looking at 
that proportion. So that a bit more like that. And that leg does. It's not as big that shape. So I'm not really, I'm not looking, looking at the sheep, the, the whole, the overall sheep at all. I'm just looking at these gaps between the legs to try to get them. Oh, James, that's completely off. So that's, that's too long, the whole thing's too long. Yeah, so the lamb's head does that. Yeah, just leave these shapes. Again, it's just a wee, a wee bit too big in the first place. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Maybe a wee bit longer. Um, and then this shape of the neck. Head. So that'll do, there you go. Um, two sheep from Henry, we have beautiful Henry Moore sheep drawings worth having a look at. Um, really nice uh, drawings of sheep that he made. Um, there's a bit more, there's a So, um, Drawing what you see, not what you think. See, letting go of your prejudice, looking at shape, drawing shapes, um, and seeing how they end up. Um, not too bad. Okay. So that's a, those are quite nice exercises. As I say, uh, it's commonly, you know, often shown to people uh, with the Stravinsky drawing by Picasso. I've done it with that. It's, a, it's a, an interesting drawing exercise to do. Um, as long as you treat it like that. So the next thing I want to do is repeat the first process. I want to do another drawing uh, of, with objects on the table. This one is a, a, again related closely to demon coins based on this drawing here. The scissors sitting on the on the, the sort of cup pot thing on the tabletop with the table. So I've, I've done something which is pretty much similar. It's more some more I'm looking down on the objects more um, and we're going to repeat the process that we just um, used uh, with the linear drawing first looking at shape um, and relationships uh, of shapes um, then light and dark to create a positive negative shape um, and uh, start start to create some depth within the drawing um, and then working in with the, the wash and then push pull uh, so here that this area here is is part of the drawing it's you know it's that drawing i showed you earlier on where he uses the um this, this dark area to, to add to the sense of, of depth of, of perspective in the drawing. Um, in, this, in this case, it's just a shape, it's not the edge of a table. Um, so you, we're looking at um, that, and that tapers, it tapers from there to there, so it's narrower at the top than the bottom. Goes to about there. So we're working on this, these sort of overall shapes before we come to this object in the middle, because it give, gives a much better uh, um, 
idea of where to place it if we have all of, all of these shapes in, in some form. Okay. Semicircle. Plate, rather. Plate. Yeah, that'll do for the moment. I probably need to adjust it as I go along a wee bit. So we're going to look at this, the pot now. So I've got these uh, things in that I can uh, look at in terms of the relationships. You know, not, I think I'm reasonably satisfied with where things are. Um, and now looking at this, uh, the pot goes something like, so where's that? Distance there. It's more open than I've got it. So, no distance, that's not too bad. Relationships aren't too bad. So, whenever you look at a, a round object, the widest part is always parallel with your plane of vision. Um, so as you move around, the widest part stays parallel with your plane of vision. It's not, not true of um, rectangular objects, obviously. So yeah, it's pretty good for that. And now the scissors. So I'm going to be looking at you know this in here. What's that angle in there? Where is it relative to anything? So it's it goes something like that, um, I think. I'm just saying that, and, you know, I'm looking at the, the relationship of how it points to the, to the edges. That's not working quite right. This should be longer than that, and the same. Yeah, I put this too far that way. It's come back a bit too big. Was that back? Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. Should be lower down too. Open that up a bit. Yeah, that's longer. There you go. Yeah, that's more like it. So the scissors are, are um, harder than anything else to get that um, their shape perspective right if you're interested in perspective. Um, Yeah, too bad. It should be further. 
Better. So there we go. Now we're going to start looking at the um, what I did before. Value negative space. And there's a value on that paper. So that'll do, uh, I think, for the moment, for the um, rendering of the uh, some sort of space values with um, the pencil. And what I'll do now is um, work into it with the, the wash as we did before, um, and then do the push-pull thing. So um, where's my wash gun? There it is. Um, and the brush is there. So, uh, same thing, the, um, now, where am I going to put it? Uh, this. For the moment, a little darker stuff. I'm going to put a lighter wash over the, um, the rest of it. So, uh, a bit of water, put the whole thing apart from the plate. Whoops, too dark. So leave the plate as the, the lightest object. And a lighter bit of wash over this. And you can, if you want, um, lift out if you, if you dry your brush, give it a squeeze out. 
like that. Um, you can uh, lift off as well a wee bit. So, oh, no, it's not, it's the wrong way around. I want that to be darker. And that to be lighter. So I'm lifting out with a drier brush to create a wee bit of difference. I'll come in and look at it again later. So I uh, give that a dry, the hair dryer. So there's one wash. Um, I'll do a wee bit again. Uh, let me sit that down so you can see it. Um, or some you know, on the, the pot itself. A bit more on this. Shadow, pencil, and there. So I'm not suggesting you can only ever do two layers of wash, um, but that's just what I'm the way I'm dealing with it at the moment for the purposes of um, demonstrating. Right. This is where your coffee wash can sometimes get a bit sticky. So there you go, that's uh, the washes. And what I did before in the previous one was now start, start pushing and pulling. Uh, so some areas might be a bit lighter Actually, I think more areas, areas are darker. So this, this bit of grey paper is a wee bit darker. Bring that down a wee bit. And this, um, I might bring up a wee bit. Doesn't make a huge difference. Ah, the pencils are all breaking.
Yeah, so that'll do for that. You can keep working on it. Uh, we get the idea. So the um, I'll stop there. The original uh, thing was looking at Demon Corn and his use of space and shape and negative shape. Um, and a parallel lines, linear perspective, uh, lightness and darkness to create the illusion of space. Um, looking at Matisse a wee bit. Uh, and his relationship to him. Uh, then the drawing practice itself was was um, I think sort of related to the demon corn thing in, in that there were I used washes, okay, to to do the drawings, um, and the subject matter was kind of loosely based on his or quite closely based to his ideas. Um, move my lights around. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so you're drawing, you're finding, you're looking at the ideas which are on the screen. You, if you want to do more of this, if you, you might follow what I've done. Um, what you might find um, interesting is to actually set yourself up uh, with something. Um, create a little still life on, on a tabletop with some bits of paper, you know, to, to play with the perspectives, uh, the parallel lines, the edges of the bits of paper, edges of the table, um, lightness and darkness, shape. Um, looking at that sort of thing, you might create yourself a viewfinder. A viewfinder is just a bit of card with a hole cut in it. Um, hang on. So a viewfinder is a bit of card with a hole cut in it like that. It can be different sizes depending on, on what you want. When you look through it, look through it with, with one eye. So what you do is, um, and it's, it's quite good to use if you are doing like I do. I like to create a, a, a boundary for my drawing sometimes. Um, and that, that corresponds, corresponds to the edge of your viewfinder. Okay, so you, you'd look at your, so there's an image, but you'd look at your, your real setup, your, your cup and your scissors and whatever, through, through the viewfinder, like, like that, like that, roughly, yeah, like that. And it helps you to, un to understand the relationship to the objects, to, to the edges of the viewfinder, so to the edges of your, the shape you've drawn on your bit of paper. So viewfinders can be quite quite helpful. So you might set yourself up with something on the tabletop. Um, an interesting one to do would be to draw your sink if you've got a you know, rectangular sink or even a round sink with things in it and things on the drain board and the tap. There's lots of interesting relationships there um, uh, of uh, with perspective and depth. Um, so uh, have a go at that. The, you might try just printing off something. I, I use the sheet drawings uh, to do the, the upside down idea. Um, try that. It can, you can do work, make it work with anything. You make it work with a photograph you've got at home. Um, just turn it upside down and try to draw. Just look at the relationships. Try to forget what it is you are. That, that might be your your family or something, but just draw the relationships as you see them in front of you. So I'll just come back to my camera. Uh, uh, there you go. I will see you next week. So we we emailed those pictures out to everyone in the classes. You might use, choose to use those, or you might use, um, you might set something up for yourself. And I will, I'll get this onto YouTube and I will see you all next week. Okay.